to the place I know With the mystery shack and the forest gnomes I'm already back, so come on, let's go Don't get me started, my heart's in gravity falls Charlie Marlowe, Wednesday the 23rd It was so humid out if you threw instant coffee in the air It'd splash you on the way back down I've almost completed piecing together all my clues into something of a time capsule. Although if I'm being frank with you, at times it felt more like I had joined a book club. I was three quarters of the way through, but it still felt like I was missing something. Wouldn't you know it, right at that moment, a dame walked into my office. Her legs swayed so much, she was like a telephone pole right before a power outage. She told me her name was Ella. My name is Ella. You've gotta help me, Detective Marlowe. Detective Marlowe, I just got that, wow. Hey, my name is multi-purpose in this situation. I've seen things that you wouldn't believe. Scary things. Unbelievable things, like I said. But it's all here in this file. Well, I can't make heads or tails of this. Well, perhaps we could arrange it in some sort of a book club of the original Gravity Falls fandom. I decided to see one of my contacts, Alexa. She'd know what to think of this. I was like, which voice do I use right now? Oh, no. No, we could end it there. We all laughed. Oh, That's no, I don't want to end it. I got. I want to hear how this you ends. You want to be a okay. part. Okay, oh, okay you got to okay. be a character. I want to be a part of it. You should be like the guy. We're I, I going was... to see Alexa. Alexa, yeah. Alexa, you're the Alexa. Go- you're the Alexa. bouncer. Okay, keep going. Okay. Alexa, yeah. go Harley Quinn hey. or, or Audrey. Okay, okay. okay. Right. Say, what's the meaning of this? <laughs> uh, nope, I'm sorry. I lost it. I, <laughs> we broke the bit. Sorry, I thought uh, so, I was supposed to do an old timey voice, and I did. I not. know, I know. I just I dropped character, and now <laughs> I want to. I want to be the. See, I feel like if it, the trope that I would want to play in this is like the uh, the the sleazy, corrupt police commissioner who's just like. Mm, okay. I was trying Your to be ass just out of here, Detective Marlowe. Get off of my crime scene. So I didn't even think before we started recording this that. One of Humphrey Bogart's most famous film noir characters is Philip Marlowe. So when Ella said <laughs> Detective Marlowe, I was nice. like, I didn't even, I didn't even do that on purpose. I was trying to do Gal Friday. That's what I was trying to do. His Girl Friday. <sighs> girl Friday. Yes, his Girl Friday. That's what I was trying to do. So uh, you are Alexa Quizon and David Spencer of Come On Fahukra Pods, a Homestar Runner podcast. Oh, we are. I love that Heck, podcast yes. so much. Wait, I don't think. <laughs> I'm trying hard to turn off the sultry voice. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. Right now. I'm, I'm, it's I'm very sultry, sexy. It's, it's hard. Day. <laughs> Tell us about your podcast, folks. Well, uh, have you ever heard of this cartoon called Homestar Runner? Most of never our listeners of haven't. Go on. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I assume it never comes up, but there was this dude named Matt Chapman, and he made this little flash cartoon about a terrific athlete. And was it any good? Wrestleman. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Oh, cool. Um, I'll check you know, it out sometime. You, know, you should check it <laughs> out sometime. check it out sometime, yeah. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very casual about it, as you know. <laughs> and every week, twice a week, we sit down and we watch a, a, a Strong Bad cartoon, a Homestrunner cartoon, a Teen Girl Squad, a Marzipan answering machine, whatever we And you, talk you about. like it a normal amount. You yeah, talk about yeah. it and enjoy it a normal amount. A, a healthy, Alexa's the fan amount. favorite on two podcasts that aren't hers. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Well, wait. What's uh, the this? What's what are the two podcasts that aren't hers that she's well, a fan uh, favorite of? Uh, I, the way I she's, see it is she's a part of Fahugwa Pod. The way I see <laughs> it is she is the host of Haughty Tot, a uh, podcast distributed within the podcast. Yes, Come yes, on, Fahugwa Pod. Within a podcast, I'm the segmentist. Yeah. Style. So yeah, she's the segmentist. But yeah, Alexa. Alexa was from our our very well our, our episode on the very first episode of Gravity Falls, Tourist Trap. Alexa and David have been checking in with us periodically on uh, on some big plot episodes of Gravity Falls because they uh, have been watching it for the first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So next week we will arrive at the mid-season finale. Uh, so what we did to get them prepared for Dreamscapers is just told them which episodes to watch so they could be all caught up. But something interesting happened in the <laughs> interim. Because we basically, yeah, the interim? The interim. That's the me word. That's me and them. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's tough to be a god. Um, um <laughs> Well, okay, before we get into that, do you wanna do uh you wanna do some fan mail? 
you want to open some, you're some right. fan letters? You're right. I was getting a little ahead of myself. I'm sorry. That's okay. We sometimes get... sometimes things around here are not as they seem. Um <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes sometimes uh sometimes gravity falls. Sometimes gravity yeah. just falls a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think that's never right. put that together until now. Yeah, the the title of the show is a bad pun. And not even like a real pun. Like oh, a half pun. That I never is put that even together better. until now. Wow. Do you want to do you want to start us wow. off with our with this iTunes review? Oh, I would love to, Ella. Jay Beltsy writes, "Don't start unbelieving." I feel lucky that I found this amazing podcast in time. I am binge listening to catch up so that I can follow along with the very charming and hilarious Ella and Charlie when new episodes <laughs> drop. Oh, thank you. I watch Gravity I Falls can vouch with my... they are indeed charming and hilarious. They're so charming. Yes. Oh, thank thank you. you. Charm is literally my name, Char M. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It works out. Just like how I'm a dispenser. Yeah, you're a dispenser. Yeah, we talked about you've this. You said before. that that is the exact thing oh, before really? on this very <laughs> podcast. Uh, I watched Gravity Falls with my kids on Disney Plus this year, so I missed out on all the conspiratorial fun when the series originally broadcasted. Nah, that's I, a million dollar word. I know. I would like that million dollars uh, to our Patreon, please. Uh, <laughs> I love the format, quality, production, guests, subject matter, and of course the hosts. The hosts present each Gravity Falls episode with love, which I love. Love this podcast. And, and you know what? Love you, Jay Belt. See, love the five stars that you gave our podcast on iTunes. Why aren't everybody listening? Why don't we all go do that? Why don't we all hey, open iTunes? David's Apple the expert podcast. on this particular situation. Why do they need to rate five stars? What were you saying about that all the time? Well, it it really helps the algorithm. You know, the uh, the it it really is. It, there are definitely people. I've done this many times where I just look on iTunes and look at at you know top podcast charts or look at new and noteworthy or do a search for a subject. And I don't know if there's other you know Disney car. I'm sure there's lots of podcasts about Disney cartoons. But oh, I know of ratings, one. <laughs> the the better ratings will uh, make it make it appear more likely in people's feeds and uh, you know the almighty algorithm. And the algorithms, thankfully, are not as oppressive as they are on YouTube. Uh, not nearly, got... but no. We've gotten <laughs> a few people already saying that they, they discovered this podcast because they just looked up Gravity Falls on iTunes. Mm -hmm. And I am incredibly grateful that we're so high in the search results. We tag every episode with two tags, Gravity, Gravity Falls, Falls and transgender. transgender. I don't know what happens if you search transgender. So let's get to the top of transgender next, folks. Give us those five stars. <laughs> Write whatever you want. Literally, doesn't even have to be a review. Write a bunch of nonsense words. Write, hey, here's Most one. of them are nonsense How about this? words in my browser. Write, yeah. in, write your review in character as a Gravity Falls character, and on the podcast, Ella and I will have to guess which character it is. Oh, that's even better. That's Ooh. great. Make it a game, yeah. We've, we've had a yeah. couple of, Make of, a game of it. in character reviews for, for Google Pods, and they are always a joy. Uh, yes. It's usually Hamsar. <laughs> and I will, and we will, Ella and I will uh, read them, or our guests will read them in whichever voice. In character. Yep. Oh, that's great. And leave them as Hamsar, too. We are married now. <laughs> that's, true. Ooh, that's, that's true. That's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, Ella so next we have... has a double date with me and the King of Town. I get it. Oh, uh, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, are you good for uh, Saturday instead of Friday? Yeah, sure. Like, I'll. Okay. As long as you bring the butter, we're good, you know. Okay, yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, just the butter. So, we don't need anything else. The butter, the butter seared butter. Yes, that's fine. We'll we'll take it. <laughs> we also got a fan letter uh, through our Gmail, Mr. Shack Look Back at Gmail dot com, uh, from a listener named Lydia. Lydia writes, "Happy finale anniversary!" Because this email was sent on the anniversary of the Gravity Falls finale. Uh, I've been loving the podcast and wanted to thank you for putting it together. You're welcome. I can't tell you how happy I was when you closed out the sock opera episode with I Can't Decide. Details like that really show your dedication to documenting the live fandom experience. Thank you. All the Gallivant talk last week, I'd definitely be interested in more. Mm. Wink. <laughs> Just wait, Lydia. Really brought me back to my experience, too. That and Gravity Falls were the two shows keeping my spirits up in early 2016 as I dealt with an injury and my temp job ending. Richard ended up being my favorite character. Same. Mm -hmm. I if I could, I'd make an edit of Stan Clips to Will My Day Ever Come, which is a song from Gallivant. That, that would be really good. I would love to see that. 
Thanks again, Lydia. Well, thank you, Lydia. I love finding weird fandom crossovers where it's just like, everybody who loves this thing also seems to love this other yeah, thing. Yeah, <laughs> even though I get it. As far I as I it. know, I don't know of any carryover in creators or actors between Gallivant and Ah, uh, well, you'll Gravity find out. Falls. You'll okay, find out. okay. None oh, are, are coming get a to Timothy mind Oman immediately. Timothy Leprechaun and Gravity Falls? <laughs> What, a crossover with Luck of the Irish? Yeah, the Luck of the Irish crossover episode. Well, well, we shouldn't spoil too much. This is a no-spoiler podcast. That's right, but, that's um, right. I also wanted to ask the two Without, of- With his scary, unbearded face. Yeah. <laughs> I also wanted to ask the two of you, self-indulgently, what you have thought of the podcast on your, on your drives to work. Oh, it, yeah. Well, I can say that it is one of the few things that we look forward to on a school day. Uh, Aww. so yeah, because forget the smiling faces of children, yeah, it's all about that. Well, yeah, we're not really sure, seeing a yeah. lot of children smiles right now, yeah. Um, oh, you're right. If, if yeah, we are right. seeing them smiling, I'm going, put your mask back on, yeah, exactly. you're right, you're right. Stop smiling, <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you smile or frown, just do it behind the mask, <laughs> yeah. It, it's gotten to a point where we started listening to it after work, too, because you know, uh, working at school during a pandemic is not as joyful as people assume it is. It's not as yeah. joyful as it yeah. sounds. Yeah, only one, really exactly. one, one person in this call doesn't have to. Yeah. yeah. Hello? I'm privileged. I love privilege. <laughs> Speaking of privilege. So what has been your, your feelings about uh, season two so far? Because we checked in last with Gideon Rises, the mm-hmm. season one finale. But it seems like you have been enjoying season two, uh, perhaps even more. Yeah. Oh yeah. I um. I I think for for going into this, uh, definitely I'll I'll talk more about this as we uh get into this episode specifically because I feel like that this episode specifically is is kind of emblematic about of what I like more about season two than season one. I am somebody who really really loves theme as like one of the most important parts of what show or movie that I like. And so it's like if it, I feel like a lot of people care a lot more about plot or characters, but for me really like the message behind the thing or the ideas that it's dealing with, if that's interesting, that's what's going to rope me in more. And I feel like there've been a couple of episodes this season that really got more uh, a, a little deeper and more mature with their themes and, in a way that I thought was really interesting and in a way that I thought like is also good for kids to see as well. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, Blendon's game. Come on. Yeah. Was- yeah. Mm-hmm. Blendon's mm-hmm. game is like the perfect example. Everything about Seuss and his dad was just like so emotional and real and I absolutely and important for kids to see and understand. Absolutely. Like it's uh, it's one thing uh, people talk about, like, 90s movies have a lot of divorced parents that get back together. At the <laughs> end, and one of the reasons oh, that Mrs. Doubtfire was, like, such a important movie, it was an important movie to me at the time, because this was a movie that shows the divorced parents, they get along better at the end, but they still don't end up back together because they got divorced for a reason in the first yeah. place. Yeah, and uh, it was right. actually Robin Williams, who was a divorcee, demanded they they take away the happy ending that they wrote in. Where well, and the thing is, is that, together. and what they did is, it's not a sad ending. It's saying, hey, guess what? This is still a happy ending. These two people should not be married together, and that's good, actually. And, like, for the Seuss episode to do something similar of, like, hey, Seuss doesn't need to meet his dad in order to be a fulfilled Yeah, complete family person. units are yeah. not, like, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Hey, don't, don't, you know the, don't you know the little girl from, from, from that movie? Yeah, oh, wait, yeah. <laughs> wait, From, uh... are you talking about Mara Wilson? Yeah, haven't Mara, you met Mara uh, Wilson whoa, 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 whoa. in your 100th episode, Female Dragon? Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much for reminding <laughs> me that our 100th episode, episode of Fahuku Pods, Mara Wilson uh, was in it. And that to was. Come- and I was most talk about... famous for the for the child in Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah, right? I was sweating. <laughs> I was sweating the entire time. <laughs> yeah, so. She talked about the origin of Trogdor the Burninator, the hit 2003 meme. (laughs) But yeah, Mrs. Doubtfire is definitely my favorite of all of the media that has been used to make fun of people like me. (laughs) Um, Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. I think it's he fine. was. I think he was more interested in making fun of his uh, Scottish acting teacher than he was. No, I'm not saying Robin pe- Williams. Yeah, I, 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 conceptually, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. There is the scene where, like, well, 
yes, there is the scene where they see him pee standing and then threaten to murder him. Yeah. <laughs> to uh, anyway, <laughs> to finish my thought, I'm so sorry. It's fine. Uh, no, I'm... I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, no I get you. I get you. I I could appreciate it on one level while also. But Ella, Ella, I want to also point out for a moment. I want you to make me a woman. Oh, I'm so happy. See, yeah, Harvey Firestein, he he, him being there <laughs> comforts me in a similar way that. Nathan Lane being there comforts me in the bird. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Put Robin Williams in a homophobic movie, but get but get a an actual get gay, a gay person, person to play off of him. There by his side. It's <laughs> good. To uh just to kind of finish my thought about like themes yes, and gravity two. falls cuz I yeah. know on the season finale I felt kind of embarrassed uh, after the fact that I was like kind of crapping on the show that everybody loves, but I know I talked <laughs> I talked a little bit about how frustrated I was at the whole, like, oh, I'm hard on him, but I'm going to make him a man. Like, oh, and for how, the dreamscaper, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, like, yeah. how that kind of trope and that, that those kind of themes appearing in children's animation turns me off to a lot of children's animated shows that a lot of people love, but, you know, season two so far has been making a, a definitely a conscious effort to to go past that. To, like, realize, you know, the weight of the fact that kids are watching and absorbing these messages. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's one of the things, like, I, I'm sure I talked about it before, but, like, my favorite animated show ever is always going to be, uh, well, my favorite children's animated show is always going to be Avatar The Last Airbender. And that's a show that I feel like was being very intentional on, like, okay, the themes and the stories we're going to tell, we're going to try to be a little bit more depth and a little bit more nuance than your typical, you know, Nickelodeon right. show. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so the episode that we told you to stop at, because it was right before the mid-season finale, is uh, Northwest Mansion Mystery, which is the 10th episode of season two of Gravity Falls, the 30th episode overall, apparently also known as Northwest Mansion Noir for reasons that no one fully understands. Yeah, no one on the crew <laughs> named it that. It just started being listed at that sometimes, and no oh, one can weird. trace why. Depending on your cable, it'll list it as Northwest Mansion Mystery or Noir, and that... Alex tweeted, it was never supposed to be Noir. Not sure where and that, that came from. And that was what our intro was about, by the way. <laughs> can I can I share the, the conversation that led to us being on, on this episode? Sure. Yes, please. It was, um, we had just listened to the podcast about sock opera, and I was messaging Charlie and I was like, oh, it's so funny how it, it's it's funny how like to listen t- when we were watching the show separate from being a part of the fandom and everything. I saw a sock opera and was like, that was a pretty good episode. That was a lot of fun. And then to hear how much love and adoration and this is the best episode on Gravity Falls on the podcast was like, oh, that's interesting that like I had a different reaction to this. And I was te- messaging Charlie about it. And it's like, I'm like, yeah, sock opera. I go, ah, that's a pretty good episode. But Northwest Mystery Mansion now, or Northwest Mansion Mystery. <laughs> There's that's, another variation. <laughs> that's like the, my favorite episode. And, and Charlie was like, And that's an really? interesting pick. Yeah. I've never met anyone who called. I don't dislike this episode at all. I love this episode. No, I could easily see it being on someone's number one, but I don't think we've met someone for whom it was. I mean, I'll say for for not having completed the show and also for only seeing every episode once, currently, this is my favorite episode. Okay, that's fair. (laughs) This uh, this episode premiered on February 16th, 2015 on Disney XD. Welcome to 2015, by the way. We are uh, officially looking at media in 2015. Should old acquaintance be forgotten? (laughs) It was about a month ago at this point. Oh, sorry. uh, (laughs) I'm a little late. It was directed by Matt Brawley, written by Mark Rizzo, Jeff Rowe, and Alex Hirsch, believe it or not. What? Alex Hirsch wrote this this episode of Gravity Falls? Okay, this is brilliant. I mean, come on. Come on, lazy bones. You're finally writing an episode of Gravity Falls, I see. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you know him. He's just sleeping all the time. He's sleeping on the job. He he gets so much sleep. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. One of my uh, high school classmates was named Jeff Rowe, and so that's why I always think of whenever that I... same is it R O W E? No, it's R O E. Ah, that was very okay. close. Must have gotten a W in there at some point in life. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> they inherited it. So without further skidoo, mm-hmm. let's watch. Northwest Mansion, uh, I mean, mystery. Okay. Oh, uh, should I say something like, uh, there was our case? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I did already. And though, you said so it, I don't that's need good. To. Yeah. You said it. Yeah, no, I don't need to say it again. A toast to our family name. I need your help. 
There's something haunting Northwest Manor. What is this place? A mansion of mystery. Jimber, what is this? Why are you so afraid of your parents? I smell a Northwest. As an uninvited guest. Come out wherever you are. Brand new Gravity Falls, Monday, February 16th at 8.30 on Disney XD. So, you finally solved the case of the Northwest Mansion mystery. I'm so proud of you, detectives. It was you all along! That's right. My co-host, you know Ella. What? Thank you for joining us. I'm not bad. I just have a sultry voice. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you're not drawn like anything because this is an audio medium. Good paraphrase. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, what did you guys think? I mean, sorry. Hey, Alexa. And David. What did you think of this? Cue theme song. Hey, Alexa, and me. What do you think of this? Okay. I love that version of the theme song. Thank you, by the way, Sim and uh, mm-hmm. Michael for making that. And David did, was the one who said it out to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And thank you, Alexa, for existing and being the reason that song. <laughs> exactly. Exists. I was about to say. Thank you myself uh, for being yeah. in song, so, but not oh, contributing oh, what, to it. <laughs> what did Alexa, each of you think of this episode? Alexa, you better talk first so I don't end up taking too long. Take too oh, long. Okay. Take uh, too long. Too long. <laughs> no, this was the first time I actually wanted David to take. Uh, to oh, take okay. Paul Do you Rain want me on to it. talk first? I'll yes. talk first. I think it is. You talk first. So, you Alexa, talk first? is it also? I talk first. <laughs> Ha 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 ha! Jokes <laughs> in Star in Mar- Marvel jokes in Star Wars. Um, <laughs> but uh, so wait, is it both of your favorite episodes? Just so I can clear this up, or is it just David's favorite episode at the moment? Oh no, it was definitely both of our favorites so far. Uh, I think, or it at least it was the one that finally made me and David go, "Oh, it's getting real. It got mm-hmm. real." <laughs> today and yeah we we respect any show that does that to me and david where we just stop in our tracks and just are silent for the most part so so david why don't you why don't you start us off yeah i think you know i i i think when we finish the show and and when i eventually rewatch it my naming of favorite episode has a high potential for changing but I think of course. I I think the reason why one of the reasons why this grabbed me so much is it genuinely surprised me in the directions it took in the second half and I you know I horror isn't really my main thing and the whole setup with the fancy party I immediately was like okay I'm like do not care about people caring about fancy things but at least I have a character in Dipper who also doesn't care about rich people being rich and yeah. um and they're so, the worst in fact oh absolutely absolutely they're they're the worst but surprisingly and delicious not afraid to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah mm. david told me people say they became vegan for the environment but if you just <laughs> eat one billionaire you're you'll doing do so way much that does a lot better and you know what there's a reason that they are called rich, and rich is also a word that we use to describe like this chocolate. Good is so, oh, this is so yeah. rich. Oh, that looks sinful. Um, Shut up, lady. But <laughs> I think, I think, like the fact that it it genuinely surprised me in where it went in the second half was made me like really sit up and pay attention in a way that I hadn't really done with previous Gravity Falls episodes. I don't think you had singled out any episode in season one, like, while you were watching it. Yeah. You hadn't messaged us about, like, oh, wow. Yeah, like, yeah. And so this was a... Little fir- Dipper, wow. This was the first time that I was like, oh, there's there's, there's something more happening here. Hearing the whole... I think the fact that when they explain the ghosts... Do it, what's the ghost's name? Uh, I think he, here he he's just have one? the okay. lumberjack. Well, there are... There's lore about him later that is not really important one way or the other (laughs) well when he starts like explaining what happened in the past i was like oh wow i'm on this ghost side now and you know being somebody who who watches a lot of marvel movies i'm used to the villain having very good points but they're still the bad guy they still kill people so they're still the bad guy well they they need they need they need leftist beliefs but a big obvious like going too far Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. Like, yeah, okay. The the fact that this was like, oh, not only are we going to give him good points, but he's actually, like, right. And the episode, even though he does turn everybody to wood, 
it still gives him what he wants. And he also does not intend on hurting innocent people. Absolutely. He, at, like, Dipper is concerned about Mabel because she was given a special invite with her mm-hmm. friends. But other than that, everyone there is, has it coming. You know, upper yeah. class. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. The, 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 the ghost tra- even tries to appeal to Dipper with, you hate them as much as I do. And he's like, look, and it, Dipper just completely casually talking to a category 10 ghost is like, look, I hear you, man. <laughs> because... yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's a very good episode at establishing how used to Gravity Falls stuff he is at this point. <laughs> I have to say about Dipper, too, is that he is being very, very understanding of the point that the ghost is making and even being like, listen, I actually get your point, but you just feel a little unstable and that's why I'm not letting you go. Otherwise, yeah, and he, he comes in, he comes in like an exterminator. He's like, all right, what do we got? Yeah. And he's uh, there's an article about him defeating a vampire bat. And and it's just you know he he's making a name for himself in a way, and, and the like fact a... that he's like not gonna let the ghost free because his sister's in there also makes perfect sense. That he's like, yeah, I'm not gonna risk this violent ghost who I don't know much about going hurting my loose. sister. Yeah, exactly. So it like also otherwise makes sense. he'd be fine. He doesn't care otherwise. He's he would ordinarily be like, yeah, all right, yeah. Sure. I mean, I don't like... I don't know if he he still would because I feel like Dipper is is one who still wants to play it safe and he's like I don't like he as he but said I think he does have pretty loose morals. Yeah, but uh yeah, anyway, so the the surprise of it and then also everything about Pacifica and her relationship with her family. I I feel really uh wary of plot lines that are like turning the turning the hated character into a friend now and like most of the time it doesn't really work for me we were late on on getting caught up on gravity falls because we got distracted watching crazy ex-girlfriend oh and, well we cannot um, fault, we cannot fault you for that <laughs> yeah that's a that's a very good thing to get caught up uh, ella ella got hooked on it at the exact same time that i was uh binge watching it and oh, okay. we didn't even communicate with each other that we had started it <laughs> What's, oh my goodness, is it Nathaniel? That's the really rich lawyer's name, right? Yes, yes Nathaniel. Yes. So that's a, he's a character in Crazy he's, that is also who, like That is also the very rich guy's name here. That's Nathaniel Northwest. Oh, yeah, it yeah. is. The original rich guy. But he, his like redemption arc in Crazy Ex-Girlfriend is one that I didn't really fully buy. Like, I... I I mean, by the end of it, like, I was okay with him being a friend for the most part, but it was still, like, I get really, really wary of those kinds of redemption arcs. And for whatever reason, like, the this this Pacifica episode really worked for me, and, like, I really bought her, I, I, I mean, partly because of that terrifying bell, like, I really bought the trauma that she went through yeah because has... well they do that with nathaniel as well right they talk about his parents and hi- how he was raised and yes they have oh, yeah. that entire song about shifting blame absolutely. onto other people absolutely. Like, and... if you think about it everything is related to trauma yeah. well I mean, if fault. i can get a little <laughs> personal here as somebody who was a was a victim of emotional abuse like i really did appreciate the fact that this episode in particular really shows how deep the the pain goes you know like uh especially with and they when do i saw without the be- explaining it they exactly do it without, without telling explaining you what the bell it. does they just show it exactly and that honestly terrified me a lot i think it, it and i think i said this during the episode that was way more terrifying to me than the bleeding eyes from the animals yeah. you know and on rewatch i there's a line at the beginning that initially i read as a joke and then on rewatch i'm like okay that maybe probably was an intentional thing where at the beginning when the haunting is starting and all the plates are, are crashing and stuff like that and Preston, Pacifica's father, says, You are my possessions! Obey me! And I'm like, oh, that's how he sees Pacifica. Yeah, yep. yeah. As yep. a that's, and I've, yeah. I've heard that from other people who have had, uh, unfortunately, similar upbringings that it's like, am I a, just a thing? Am I a keepsake? Right, and they talk about the reputation! <laughs> like, that anything that you do reflects on the rest oh, of yeah. us somehow. Yeah, I was like, yeah. is this my dad? Like, <laughs> is he talking for I, me? I, like, I wanted to point out you are my dad. that uh, <laughs> that Nova Starlight in our Discord, on a trip to Momocon, gifted Doug Walker, the Nostalgia Critic, a, a DVD of Gravity Falls, and that led to him doing a series of vlogs as he watched through it with his brother. And during this episode... They both made the note that you, we see a kind of romance building between Dipper and Pacifica. And both Ella and I were like, no, we didn't. <laughs> I yeah, didn't see yeah. that. 
Yeah. I don't I don't I don't really I don't get it. I really hope do. that there isn't. Yeah. Well yeah. uh no spoiler we'll podcast, but uh mm. Okay. Yeah. Oh. No, no, no spoiler podcast. <laughs> Take that back. <laughs> well, I didn't say anything. I rescind that mm. But an interesting point that Doug Walker does make in that video because of broken clock, right? Uh <laughs> is that the the ghost flame beard heavily resembles the demon pirate LeChuck's flame beard from Curse of Monkey Island, and they wonder if it's an intentional reference. <laughs> I don't know where Alex is on LucasArts point and click adventure games. I know that uh, Bill Cipher is partially named after the Cipher levels from Chip's Challenge. <laughs> According to he he replied to a a tweet by Neil Cicerico of him cosplaying Chip with Oh my God, I'm a big fan too. And I also know that that Neil, one of Neil's first albums was a Monkey Island cover album. So, and he's sort of a friend of Alex's. So I'm maybe going intentional, with... maybe intentional on the part of a character designer. I'm going with yes for my own sanity. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Here's something that was absolutely not intentional, but everyone thinks it is because people don't understand how long animation takes. So this episode features. <laughs> Not only the ringing of a bell commanding someone's daughter, but also people turning into trees. And this happened right after Over the Garden Wall aired in fall of 2014. Oh. And those two things also happened in that show. I don't know if either of you have, they have watched they have, it. It's been a it, while. Yeah. It's been a while. Oh, yeah, we have. But mm-hmm. we've seen it. But they do. Yeah, that is, those are both plot elements mm-hmm. in that show. But again, like with Five Nights at Freddy's in well, Seuss and the Real Girl, yes, there's but no also way that the, the, the mug thing in... Um... Rick and Morty. Yeah, so, yeah, so because it's, I we're guess talking I could about, see how that would make people... Yeah, we're talking about someone that Alex knows and has work with making a show. Yeah, you're right. So but it's, it's, um, uh, it's hazy. I'm going to go with, I'm yeah. going more, we don't know if this was intentional or not. I guess. I could definitely see how that happening in Society of the Blind Eye shifts people's thinking into maybe this connection... Isn't just coincidence, but that's the problem when... I mean, like, there's also the explanation that Alex's friend was like, hey, I'm working on this show. This is some of the stuff we're doing. (laughs) Like, yeah, they do know each other socially. (laughs) Like, it's it's, maybe it's not parallel thinking because they were talking, but maybe it isn't all equally not an intentional crossover moment as the Rick and Morty thing was. But who's to say? I was very upset by this episode when I first watched it. Oh, Oh, why? Well, at the beginning, they have their cold open. Let me go into the theme song. And it's quite cold. It's raining, even. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, one it's of our coldest of openings moist, thus far. It's more of a moist open. <laughs> and so they, they start playing the theme song, and then they, they skip ahead a little bit. And then they skip ahead even more, and it's, it's been cut down to, like, 15 seconds. And I was very upset by that. I felt like the, the SpongeBob moment where the, there's the in Squidward's dream when he's playing for a king, and he's like, why have you stopped playing that beautiful music? <laughs> because I love the theme song. I don't want it to get cut short for time, even though they did it to fit more of the episode. They did, in, it, but... they did it to make it because the episode ran a little long and they still had to have the correct amount of commercial breaks. But we watch this on the digital video disc. They could have restored it, it would not have inconvenienced <laughs> That's us. That's a really good point. That's a really good point. You know what else I wish they would do for these DVDs is like, and, and streaming, etc. Because I was rewatching Time Traveler's Pig recently, and there's a sequence where, like, the buffalo are charging at them right before the commercial break, and there's a shot of them charging, and Dipper and Mabel scream, and then they cut. And then there's another shot of the buffalo charging, and Dipper and Mabel scream again, because we just came back from commercial. <laughs> I wish they just snip those off. <laughs> I, recently... like, I feel like though, if if they did restore the full theme song for the uh, digital vis- video disc version, the you would have purist uh, fans being like, "This isn't the version that I saw on TV." I, I want get... you to give no, me and the I'm version okay with, with the it. bumpers on the bottom. And the, the I'm okay with it now because like I understand why they did it, and also plenty of other episodes have the full theme song, and I think it's just an interesting tidbit. But it genuinely upset me the first time because I always would, you know, <laughs> dance along, sing along. It's it's really it's a fun yeah, thing. Yeah, it's like if a uh, you know Smallville cut off their theme song. Oh, we're not getting right? into that. Not, yeah, listen, yeah, Alexa, exactly. we've heard what talking about that show can do to your marriage. We don't talk about Smallville. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, oh no, no. So That's, none of us, Smallville, none of us are in favor of of <laughs> Dipper falling in love with Pacifica, who he calls the worst to her face. However, how do we feel? Speaking of ships, how are we feeling, Grenda and Marius now, huh? Oh, Grenda and Marius 
fantastic. Made for each other. Cut from the same All the way. We have another yeah. Matt Chapman boy in this episode. Another, it's the exact <laughs> same voice as Mormondo, <laughs> just with an Austrian accent instead of Mexican. Matt Chapman is Marius von Funthauser, whose uh, profile in the guest list is as follows. After inheriting his father's cravat and epaulets factory at the age of seven, Marius Marius von Funhauser quickly rose to prominence as the richest rich boy in Richard Richington's Rich Boy's Rich Academy. Further rich, he richly rich, 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 rich. And it calls back to. I, just, I do love that Marius like appreciates Grenda's humor. Like that's like part of the beauty. Yeah, it, it of calls it. back to the code in Dipper and Mabel's guide to mystery and nonstop fun that claims Grenda will marry rich. Turns out it wasn't a guy named Rich. It was a rich guy. Well, he did attend the school. Uh, his headmaster was named yeah, Rich. So. Yeah, yeah. Was Richard Richard Richington? Not only is Marius rich, he's rich. Wait a minute. Rich. Wait, Richard hold rich. on. What was that guy? Do you think that that guy's name is that Richie Rich? I am. I'm grown I'm, up for absolute. Yeah, of course. The timeline adds yeah, up. Obviously. How old would he be now? <laughs> and then that was that was that was when he grew up, but before he died and became Casper. That's correct. Or no, no, there's a time loop the because there's also was. a Casper reference in this episode. Oh, that's right. The category right. one right. the category in, the, one. in the, the journal when he looks at the different types of ghosts is clearly <laughs> Casper. But yeah, I love that Marius <laughs> likes Grenda because I hate Mabel and Candy in this episode. <laughs> yeah. Because their, their whole yeah. thing with this is that they want to attend the party because there's fancy boys there, etc. And then they realize that, okay, we Candy and, and Mabel decide that Grenda is too intense for them to right. collectively mm -hmm. flirt with Marius, so they have to do it in secret without her. They have to exclude her because she is um, unfeminine, perhaps, because she does mm. not fit their mold of femininity, and I hate them, and I don't like cis people. Sorry. <laughs> and it's nothing and against it's you two. You guys like, are great. It's just... You guys Your are community. great. It's just, <laughs> of course. It's just. I'll accept it. That's fine. I don't agree with their lifestyle. It's, yeah. So things. anyway, again, leave iTunes review. Let's get into the top results of our other tag. <laughs> yeah, and and <laughs> for her to, you know, because we've had from the beginning that this character was introduced, constant jokes about her voice and her being muscular and and just everything about her that is gender nonconforming, and. She gets to show up to the party in this beautiful dress. She gets the guy. And it's really nice. It's really nice to see them treat her like a girl. They don't have to do it in a heteronormative way. They don't, it's not like, it's not like Marius is, is manlier than Grenda, you know? It's not like someone sweeps her away and puts her into a feminine role traditionally. She is still herself, mm -hmm. but it is... Full of... It's not like someone Annie gets your guns her or perhaps greases her. Or my her. fair ladies her. <laughs> hey, what is it with the? Uh... Never mind. Don't worry about it. Not important now. Um, Sorry, I'm on my I'm on my broad. Yeah, yeah. I'm always on broad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have that in common. <laughs> yeah, it's really sweet to to have Grenda point out that there's. He did actually on have something shirt. on his and shirt. Marius is just... Yeah, yeah, and Marius goes. Oh my I God. do have mustard I do on have my shirt. On I love shirt. you. You know. <laughs> no little. No, little German boy, don't go into that mustard. <laughs> don't get that well, hot dog. I, I imagine, <laughs> I imagine that, like Pacifica, Marius probably grew up in a rigid structure of of how everything was supposed to be, and I'm right, sure and that says, included yeah, gender her roles. Boldness and, and he's confidence. very excited about, yeah, that the fact that it's it's the a way to break. It's out like he of always the, felt like he had to make uh, the first move with people because he is yeah, yeah a yeah. guy. Also, Matt Chapman has now voiced Mermondo and Marius. Is is there going to be a third a MR, candy a candy uh, love interest voiced by Matt yeah, Chapman? Yeah, <laughs> Mercutio. Yeah, Mer yeah, he's voicing Mercutio. Mom, he's wrong, Rad. Mercutio yeah. in the <laughs> Romeo and Juliet episode, in which uh, Candy is the role of Juliet. And so, yeah, it's no, just wait. it's it's wait, wait, no, doesn't Mercutio, Mercutio doesn't end up with Juliet. Sorry, no. sorry, I just it's just really nice <laughs> to see as a trans woman. It's nice to see Grenda treated well by the narrative, and to see them as a trans woman. It's nice to see Grenda. It's nice to see Grenda. Yeah, she she she's adorable. <laughs> I love love that kid. As a human being, it's nice to see Grenda. I love seeing and her. she's 
it's the and just nice to see them, you know, apologize to her and admit that they were wrong. They were they were being a little turfy. They were being a little turfy this episode. We got a little turf Mabel. They were being a they were being a bit very, of very they turfy, were being yes. a bit of a, a Joanne and and Ricky. A jowling cowling. <laughs> uh, and Ricky. Don't forget oh, Ricky. It's just that Grenda Grenda, it's not that we don't like you. We're just Woombin born Woombin and we think that you know, you need to just stand over there. And it's just so, it makes me really mad. And I get that they're in the wrong for it, but it makes me particularly mad, not just because oh, yeah. they're being bad friends, but because in my mind, they're being transphobic. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. anyone else want to, I see, okay, also David, the, uh, the, you, you got to turn on the soapbox. Uh, I was just, Alexa, you got, I, we can, we can all stay, there's room on it for all of us at the same time. <laughs> I already said Monkey Island, that was all I knew. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I, I absolutely, I absolutely was very disappointed in, not even, that's a very nice way to say that I was disappointed in Mabel and Candy. Yeah. Uh, I had way more stronger feelings about it. Just to add on top of that is the whole idea of making a decision for somebody else is just like, Oh yeah, we you can't know. we can't have uh, Grenda flirt because you know people won't like that. And it was just like it's it's a little disgusting. It's a little <laughs> like how, it was just like it's a bit of how uh, Pacifica's parents treat her with the whole like oh what you do will reflect badly on us, so we cannot have you being yourself yeah. around. Pe- and it's a lot of like oh on us, boy right? exactly. Oh, you know, I know trans how womanhood is. is a lot of like oh well how will men perceive you? Like how you can't like date like. I would prefer if they I, never. I have sorry. my. Sorry, dude. <laughs> my wife is my wife is bisexual. So if I'm feeling different someday, she's like cool. <laughs> yeah. <that." laughs> but I'm a I am a buffet yeah. to her. <laughs> she gets everything. Perhaps she doesn't have to be picky. <laughs> I'm a I'm a smorgasbord. A veritable smorgasbord. I think one other uh, thought I have, if it's okay for me to jump it to is. a different. Yeah, subject. we were. I was. Oh, yeah, please. Yeah. I, I, it kind of struck me on the rewatch of this of, I, I don't know if this is going to be the case. I'm going to throw this out there. And of course, neither of you will be able to say anything because this is a spoiler free podcast, but I All did. Right, I will bite my tongue. Ow. Never doing that again. I did get struck with the sinking feeling of, oh, I'm really enjoying like <laughs> this turn for Pacifica right now. Yeah. And I'm worried that it won't last in the way that I want it to. Mm. And and when I say that is that I'm sure they're going to continue to have her be a, a friend of the crew and and uh, more of a, a quote unquote good guy. But I feel like I I have this a uh, 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 a problem. Speaking of Nathaniel from Crazy Ex Girlfriend, yeah. but also just a lot of media where they will have the, all Nathaniels, the rich asshole. And he learns to be, or, you know, he or she or they learn to be a better person. And then Alvi, the classic I have dragon. Not seen, I have not seen a they in that situation yet. That would be fascinating. <laughs> but they learn to be a, a better, nicer person throughout the show. But they're still rich and they still have their rich tastes. And it's something that, like, because mm-hmm. I personally, you know, feel like there is something maybe intrinsic to being rich. It makes you act like a bad person because that's what that's the correct. classism does. That is absolutely what this that's episode what is saying. the concept of wealth is based yeah, that on. Is, and, and that's yeah. the thing is, I loved that, you know, at the end of this episode, even though, like, the gesture of letting everybody in was more symbolic than anything, it was still... It it wasn't just Pacifica trying to reject being listening to only her parents, but it was also deliberately rejecting the reputation that they were trying to hold of being a rich person. It was like literally rejecting her class image in a way that I feel like doesn't usually happen with like rich characters in media becoming better. Another trope that uh, similar to the, uh, leftist villain who goes too far in a very obvious way to discredit leftism. <laughs> There's a trope of like Sim- uh, similarly to the Kingsman, the Secret Service Uh-oh. villain in this episode. <laughs> there's a there's a there's a trope that you know is a, a lot of Disney stuff where. I mean, I'm the particular example I'm thinking of is Frozen Two, so I'll just go with that. Where okay, Frozen Two starring Frozen Jason, 2 starring Ritter? Jason Ritter? That one. I think I I might have picked this up from the Lindsay Ellis video about Dumbo, or maybe it wasn't just about Dumbo. Yeah. So anyway, what? So during that video, she constantly cuts to Alan Arkin. Just going, oh okay. So so there's a 
And it again, I this came out before Frozen 2, but I noticed it in Frozen 2 <laughs> where they will take a structural issue and mm-hmm. pin it on a single character, especially when you're dealing with royalty or like, you know, royal families. For sure. There are there's no, this is a bad rich person, but there are good rich people and it's the in Frozen 2, it's like the native people of that magic forest which I don't remember them. I'm sorry, Jason. I wanted to like it. The Jason Ritters of that forest who live in that forest. The native people J- Jason and the Ridettes yeah, who live in that forest. The native people there 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 was some kind of miscommunication or, or deception going on and uh they were ha- they had to find out what the truth was of, of the history of what happened. Turns mm-hmm. out no, it's not historical like societal bias or prejudice or oppression or anything. It's just the one guy. It's just their grandfather who was a bad guy and was plotting but, against but them. But didn't you didn't you notice that every single problem in this country got fixed when we got that the previous? I know, right? It's office. great that everything's better now. That was that was a close one. Every the, the environment's better than I've been, it I've been outside been. sucking up the They're air like, all day. The the scientists are like, I don't know changed. how to describe this. There's not enough CO2. Yeah. Can everyone start? Can like, we use some out like, air, like we're actually the ozone layer is kind of feeling a little bit stuffy. Can we like get some holes? <laughs> it's too. It's it's thick and not a lot of sunlight is get getting through, holes? and now it's yeah. getting cold. Okay. Yeah. So, and and this episode directly refutes that. It's like, no, it it's all rich people. It is a it is a structural, yeah, yeah. and at the same time, it is. It is both, like, harsher about it, but also, like, more real and nuanced about it, where it's like, no, it's not, oh, it's I mean, not because they, sh- they have bad personalities because they're just bad people. It's because they were raised, like, rich, and that so, yes, corrupts they were, you. They were raised with a, 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 with a system of, uh, with a lifestyle based upon limiting exactly. others. Yeah, yeah. And they say to Pacifica, you don't have to be that if you choose to work, like, for a better world, you know? and and. And, you know, it, it seeming like she will be the first Northwest to break the cycle, because this goes back far. We see all the mm-hmm. Even Nathaniel, the terrible... who, uh, he, so I'm a little confused, because we see Nathaniel Northwest as the one who shuts out the lumber folk. And yet, the, according to the Northwest document in Irrational Treasure, he still died choking on a piece of bark in an attempt to become a powerful wizard. So he, uh, he had he the money, a, but listen, he, he was still, he was... like, uh, an idiot. <laughs> You're describing all rich people. You're right. You're right. You're right. No, you're right. It just it 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 seemed. I I assumed based on the it's document the picture, that yeah. <laughs> he didn't really come into money or use it that much. He was just like, oh, cool. I am a patsy nope, in this cover. Nope. That was a that was an incredibly wealthy owner of all of the property. Given you know he lied in a deal with the indigenous peoples was of that Oregon him? is a plot point. Oh, that was uh, a different I think it was, character. So in the painting. it doesn't matter. Someone in his family. The did. timeline Look, is a little be, confusing. He may be a complete. Yet, but... <laughs> he may be a complete idiot. That's who else is going to get the money? You know, Dilbert. No, you're rules. right, but and it's also that thinking about because Dipper again brings it up. Like, oh, I thought it was lying about founding <laughs> the town. Like, they are in that position because of a government conspiracy which is a whole other <laughs> level of this whole thing <laughs> it's weird that it's weird that the creator of dilbert wrote something that is to some extent leftist when he sucks <laughs> well you know uh it's like uh the the broken clock uh effect i i just to just kind of wrap up my whole thought on on pacifica and uh, her decision at the end to let everybody in and i i just like that you know at the end of the day truly the best way for for somebody who is rich to actually show they are a good person is to you know get rid of their wealth by material improving materially improving the lives of those around them right like throwing them one party one time you're you're talking about siddhartha and that's that's why i had the the i'm enjoying this but you're moment worried. where yeah. this is the last Gravity Falls episode I've seen yeah. because I don't have a chance for them to let me down in the future yet. <laughs> but, you know, just just for anybody who is, you know, a rich yeah, yeah. what you got to do is you just got to give away all of your wealth. What was your, your Patreon again? Mis- What's oh, that's yeah. actually Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com slash Mystery Shack, okay, but there's okay. actually another Patreon I would love to highlight. That would be yours. <laughs> I was also going to suggest that if you are a rich yeah, yeah. listening that I 
Oh, feel like hey, you just work yeah, that would be awesome. so hard. You work too hard. And you know what I have here is a delightful, warm bath. Why don't you just hop on in here? The water's fine. <laughs> I'm going to cut you up some bath toys, and you just you just relax, buddy. I'm going to... You know what? You know what? Let's get you a snack as well. Do you like toast? How do you feel about apples? I have a, a nice apple here that I can put right in your mouth. I can feed it to you like an emperor. <laughs> oh, okay. That kind of bath. I thought we were throwing a toaster. Uh, linking up to your point about how it has a deeper understanding of how rich uh, dynasties operate. Board artist Alonzo Ramirez Ramos suggested that Pacifica should be wearing red gloves because, quote, her family has blood on their hands. Mm. Every Alonzo story is just, then Alonzo gave his suggestion, Ooh. and then the show was fixed from that point <laughs> forth. Every single time. The portal being turned on because it's more dramatic <laughs> was him. So we get, like the previous episode, last week we talked about I the love, love god, which featured Mabel helping out Robbie, Dipper's former rival, and now here we have Dipper helping out Pacifica, Mabel's former rival, which I think is really interesting. Oh, ah, interesting little thing there. We meet the mayor of Gravity Falls, and it's Alex Hirsch. Oh. Yeah, he has Alex. He has a hair that's fluffy on the side and a goatee, like uh, how Alex's hair grows when he doesn't cut it, and the blanket on his lap is made of flannel. Alex never doesn't wear his flannel shirt. That's his favorite color. Yeah. Just like Wendy. His flannel, yes, exactly. That That is a joke based on Alex. <laughs> so, yeah. The uh, at the time, Alex's Twitter bio was the mayor of Gravity Falls. So I ride a buffalo that the to The mayor work. was going to... <laughs> when it... When, yeah, now... When it came that the mayor of Gravity Falls was actually going to show up, that there was no question of who would be voicing it and how his, how his hair design would look. is. <laughs> the only difference is that he is 102 on years old and his name is Mayor Befuftelfumter. <laughs> but Alex, that would be his name if, if it was he could not choose. Alex. Yeah, if he could choose a new last name, which he can. There's still time <laughs> to change it to Alex Befuftelfumter. <laughs> There's still time, Alex. <laughs> hey guys, you know, ancient sins. Ancient <laughs> sins. Ancient sins. This is on Disney yes, XD. There's a scene in this. <laughs> Taxidermized animals mounted on the wall begin chanting and are bleeding from their eyes. And eye. mouths. Da, 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 it's da. jam. Mm -hmm. How do we feel it's about, how, about that jam and now, <laughs> I imagine, I, I, am, I joked Alex showed up at the S&P department and everyone turned off the lights and they're like, don't talk to if don't, he, They can't see you if you don't move. Up. It's like a dinosaur. And they all hit under the tables and, like, close the curtains, like those, those uh, drills yeah. at school. Oh, <laughs> and he's like, hello? I had some questions about the new episode. Is anyone It's in like there? they hide and it's like the velociraptor scene in Jurassic Park where they figure out how to unlock the door. <laughs> Alex, they figure out, Alex figured out how to yeah. open doors. It's funny because that scene with the animals bleeding already was like, oh, my goodness. They, they went there with this episode. But not only did that shock me, I, I thought they couldn't shock me anymore until I saw the lumberjack's death scene. I was like, "Oh, oh gosh. God, yeah, it's not ending. It's not Good. ending." Like, yeah, he <laughs> and he has the mark. He has a wound in his head where the axe broke into his skull in every single during the mudslide. Yeah, he gets caught in a mudslide because they chopped down all the trees to build Northwest Manor, and and especially the, even before that, the shot of all the graves that it's literally built on this like grave of uh the working class like yeah yeah and the fact that like the uh, was it the grandfather watching him die because like it, nathaniel northwest shot. the great great grandfather yeah, yeah it's just like the hand being like you know look watching a man die and just having no remorse and just like stare like that was terrifying yeah of course yeah it's it's that perfect intersection of the really dark horror stuff and the really honest class warfare stuff and the really good jokes that all tie in with it like ghost to yes. of course on the used to be that history channel yeah and the they, they had to break up the horror a little bit right so used to be about history channel such a good, good there's thing. the sequence yeah. where the the ghost is unleashed on the mansion and he brings all the taxidermy animals more fully to life and my favorite is the deer just kind of dragging itself along and screaming <laughs> Oh god! Oh, uh, my goodness. favorites are are the goat that uh, because its horns are so heavy and it does not have back legs cannot stand upright, so is walking on its side. And two ducks carry a man away who we do not see. And he doesn't get turned to wood. He just gets carried off. 
Yes, and we don't see him ever again. That We never see that extra's character design for the rest of the series. He's gone. When Dipper is getting uh, turned into wood, he takes on a pose that the shapeshifter did in Into the Bunker when he says, this is the last form you'll ever take. He makes that exact same pose uh, an expression. I mean, that's uh, hmm. pretty interesting. And an, a, a, another fun uh, culmination of a running theme is uh, there have been many scenes in which the free pizza guy was denied his pizza until today. When he enters the party, he finally gets his pizza. Because <laughs> free pizza guy sees the means of the pizza. <laughs> yeah. Take a take a slice of the means of production. Don't just take a slice. Take the whole pie. <laughs> <laughs> the to- when, the, when the top 1% of the population gets 99% of the pizza, that is fundamentally wrong. <laughs> Speaking of guys who sound like that, this is the first episode with no Grunkle Stan. <gasps> That's right! Oh my goodness! Oh, I didn't even wow. think about what that. that! What do you think that funky little fella's up to? Probably, probably some of his wacky season one yeah, scams. Probably, probably just a harebrained <laughs> scheme. So how did you feel about, uh... Oh, that, with a plan or a plot to make it to the top, but he's always in the middle because he's always getting caught. Wait, he's wait, just wait. watching TV in his boxers. That's what he's well, doing. He's watching the Duchess of Proof. <laughs> he's watching the, for, uh, the old lady boring movie period piece channel. No, no, Dipper left the TV on, and he's like, I'm not going to watch this garbage. And then it's like, then we figured there was a ghost in the house. He's like, what, really? And then he sits down. I just love I feel the like... idea that serious things are happening, and he's just like, I'm going to watch TV, like, in my boxers. Like, that's what's happening. Of course. Like... I mean, that's when you're... He only, he doesn't own that many Alice pants. Hirsch has, has talked about how when you reach Stan's age, you are allowed to do whatever you want around the house. You are allowed to just walk around <laughs> in your boxers. You have, oh, yeah. you have earned that by living that long. How, how did you feel about uh, Old Man McGucket's sequence at the end there? He he walks up to Dipper and... Uh... Ooh, ooh, be careful, Ella. He's talking about things that are to oh, come. Oh, you mean he's kind of he's kind of conspire? He's being a little conspiratorial. I thought he was being a little conspiratorial, so I would suggest maybe if you want to talk about this in this room, just, just tread lightly. Down. Okay. It, it's so funny because I know that that was a big moment, but it was just like, it was hard for me to get like, oh, what's going to happen with that one? Because it was just like so many big moments already happened in this episode that, you know, the world uh, possibly exploding was like the last thing on my <laughs> mind. You know, right. I guess like um, it's kind of why I'm one of the few people that love The Last Jedi over <laughs> Force Awakens because I'm very much into I don't think that's uh, one of the yeah <laughs> I, I I I don't know I only know the three of you so I think that's a unanimous <laughs> right. th- opinion. I, I guess what I'm saying I'm is sure the entire world thinks that the Last Jedi is the best Star Wars movie ever. Yeah, I I I, I was told I was asked some friends who had seen it first. What did you think? They said, it was really weird. I don't know what I think. It's going to be your favorite, yeah. Charlie. <laughs> but no, I, I, get, yeah. I get what you're saying, Alexa, because it almost feels like the conclusion of this episode is is going on. It's like, okay, well, quick, get out of the way. We got to talk about this. Right, exactly, because it's like I, I'm more interested in character growth than plot oh, growth yeah, a lot absolutely. of the time. So I think this episode already took out – a lot of me to the point where I was like, end of the world, that's nothing. Like, I mean, that, that defied would happen. her father. Like, that would yeah. happen the second that a rich person is nice to poor people. Right, exactly. The world explodes. <laughs> the apocalypse, the end time. Uh, dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. Mass hysteria. I like it on a character level for a very subtle reason where, you know, McGucket is talking about all these dire warnings. He fixed the laptop. Something terrible is coming. And Dipper... The one time in his life thus far that he is not overly concerned, overthinking, and paranoid, he's like, you know what? Let's just let's just enjoy the party for tonight, huh? Is probably the one time that it actually matters. Yeah, which is kind of sad too. I feel like part of that it does part of that come from the fact that he was like, well, I came in here to stop this one crazy supernatural thing, and it turns out that that should have actually happened. So I'm I'm not gonna rush. And he's to also stop he's you know he's embracing in like a new friendship. He's he's feeling he's feeling yeah. optimistic tonight when he was really cynical earlier. It's taking Ella, here's one for you. You. Those are the two characters you have related to on the grounds of obsessive compulsive mm-hmm. disorder. Maybe Dipper's seeing McGucket getting like this, and he's like, oof, am I like that? <laughs> yeah, and that's also, but that's also how it operates, where it's like, oh, the one time that you don't do the compulsive checking thing is when it's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel that to some extent with, uh, with my, no, I don't have the same diagnosis, but I have some 
paranoia is. I, I, my favorite bit in that ending sequence is McGucket when he's in front of other party guests, forcing himself to. Yeah, talk he's like masking McGucket. like a like old man McGucket, and then he becomes <laughs> Fiddleford McGucket. It reminds me of the scenes in Face Off where the the John Travolta character has to remind himself to be Caster Troy, but Nicolas Cage is acting the whole sequence. So you see Nicolas Cage like, "Hi, I'm Ni- I mean I'm Nicolas Cage." <laughs> so why don't we head out of the? Yeah, we're going to have to talk. We are going to have to talk about that ending because it it absolutely is a sign of things to come. But not here. Uh, but we, we can't cannot... talk here, detectives. No, we have no, to. No. We have to move. There's actually, I believe, Ella and I actually have a secret room in the museum behind, uh, what? Just a second. I knew it. Okay, I've been dusting that. There's a door. There's a door up ahead. I have to. Okay. Yeah, you know the Renaissance painting of Honey that uh, Nia got me for Valentine's Day? Right, I have to admit, when I was dusting it, it moved a little, and I heard a different noise. Yeah, that Spanish collar is real, so you have to cut, figure out a way to squeeze through that <laughs> collar. All right, we're here. There's a, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to talk to the bouncer real quick. What's the password? <laughs> if this is full, yeah. what's this? All right. All right, we're in. Ladies and gentlemen. Right this way to the Hall of Conspiracy! So, uh, the, another sign that something big is about to happen is the agents are back. They, they established them in Season 2, Episode 1. They've been appearing in the background in every episode. But uh, now they're back they and they're have talking. Dialogue yeah. again. They Which... they paid. They they once again paid Nick yep. Offerman because <laughs> you know they had to they had to get a get a, a little more subtle transphobia in there after they finally treated Grendo well. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I I, I disagree. Know, yeah. I think that ending. I think Tambry Tambry walked out because she just didn't want to interrupt a couple's argument. Right. Right. It was not about the gender or so. What what to make of the of the, uh, the agents, David and Alexa. <sighs> <laughs> I don't I don't really have strong opinions on them honestly I'm Well let just... me let me let me give you a let me give you a segue into it better uh from Santa Claus say on the subreddit wrote at, uh, at the end during the credits it showed the two agents saying they picked up a big wave on their radar familiar maybe as big as a wave as maybe the portal being used again mm. I guess mm. it is also a coincidence that Stan and Seuss were nowhere to be found or even mentioned during the episode Maybe they were opening up the portal. That also explains the code. The handyman knows more oh. than you think. <gasps> oh my goodness! Okay, I feel like I made some kind of theory out of that in the first episode. Oh, you've got a lot of theory. Anything that happens in the show, Alexa has already described. Just oh, we're just relying on her not remembering that she already predicted. Exactly. <laughs> Which is good, because I try, I really do try to come in with a fresh set of eyes all the time. So you completely wipe your brain of everything you said the previous podcast. You got that oh, memory Oh, yeah, gone. like, just ask everybody at Fahuga Pots, which is David right here and Michael. Uh, like, I forget things after. Hi, Michael. Because Thanks for listening. It, it, it's almost like when I get, like, a theory, like, something takes over for me, and then it leaves my body. <laughs> that's that's kind of how it is. But I love the fact that Seuss, I knew Seuss knew a lot more than what was going on. You know, that's just, it it had to do with the baseball bat, right? Like if ever there's a pinata, like I don't Ah. even think I've seen anything happen yet with that pinata. I've been waiting for that pinata. Just so I can tell myself Dude, you were right. Alexa. You don't. It's like a. It's a narrative device. You don't give somebody a pinata whacking bat if you don't intend to use it. It's Chekhov's <laughs> pinata. Well, bat. actually, it's amazing you point that out, Alexa, because uh, you you related the pinata to one of the symbols on Bill Cipher. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Wheel right. being the mm-hmm. llama, and this is the episode where we finally potentially, uh, Britt Bain on the subreddit believes. Figure out who is the llama, because there is a painting in that back room, not only of the injustices committed by the Northwest family, but of a llama. Here's the picture. Oh. So I think you're right about that pinata, Alexa. I think you're right about that. I think we have to whack Pacifica with a bat. (laughs) (laughs) We figured it out. We have to whack Rick's Yeah. (laughs) And see if if trees come out. In the mafia sense. (laughs) 
<laughs> is this the most radical episode you've had? No, probably not. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be great if this was the 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 most. I think this um, is more of a baseline. Don't fly list. Yeah. <laughs> don't fly list things we've said on the podcast. But no. So Kate Burley on on the Gravity Falls subreddit theorizes Bill is or was going to possess Time Baby. The banner thing after McGucket shows the laptop shows a one-eyed triangle over a hell-like setting. In the Time Traveler's Pig, we saw in the distant future, or maybe the not-too-distant future, Time Baby, we saw Time Baby laser shooting everyone and causing fires. Could this be Bill? The one-eyed triangle definitely represents Bill, but what if he was in another form, the Time Baby? This would also prove the decoded phrase that says Time Baby is worried about Bill, which is from the uh, Dipper and Mabel's Guide. It's an interesting one. I do not remember the Time Baby. The Time Baby. Okay, so, yeah, so the Time Baby is treated as a joke, but, um... In Time yes, Traveler's uh, Pig, okay, it's more so there of a are... joke. In Blendon's Game is where he really has... Yes, Blendon's oh, Game, right, that's there the is time a... Time Baby, okay. right. But also, also the Time Baby had been foreshadowed, because before he shows up in Time Traveler's Pig, it says that there is a baby god hit frozen in a glacier but glaciers never melt so we'll be fine and then in dippers and mabel's guide to mystery and nonstop fun it says there is something frozen in a glacier that is even more powerful than me so it is hinted that you know we have two godlike creatures or according to this theory one hmm. okay okay I know Time Baby's ridiculous, and sometimes a lot of figuring out Gravity Falls lore is like, which of these stupid things am I supposed <laughs> yeah, to Yeah, but there's <laughs> also the, the Mr. Peanut Triangle is apparently something we're supposed to yeah. take seriously. Yeah. So, yeah. any Enthidin can have plan. And Enthidin can have plan. All right, what's plan. the next one? <laughs> this one's great. It's from uh, Physics for Fools, and they point out that McGucket's green uh, steampunk, steampunk glasses, glasses as Alexa called them. Are that. missing one lens, and Journal 3 has a green monocle <gasps> attached to it. Okay. Interesting. But McGucket is not the writer of the journals, so, okay. He, uh, but he's the, the assistant. assistant. So that means he would have, if it's, he, you know, he's worked with the journal, just not directly on it. Maybe the author I'm... was like, hey, I need one of your glasses lens, nerd. Give me that. <laughs> or... <laughs> Just popped it out when yeah. he wasn't looking. He's like, you you seen my glasses? Or can the lens uh, no, see no. A, a third level of text that e the black mm, light doesn't catch? Perhaps. I'm really Good hoping thing. that the author of the journal... Or, alternatively, the, the lens mm. always could see the hidden text and Dipper just forgot to use it and they did figure <laughs> it's out It's been the literally light. attached to the book and just Dipper never figured it It would have worked out. just like a black light and Dipper just didn't what think to use it. Oh, I was just saying, I'm really hoping that the writer of the journal is someone we've seen before. At least I'm thinking it is. Like, I I have to believe it is because, but then again, like, oh, gosh, I'm starting to doubt myself for this one mm. because it's just like when McGugget was revealed to not be the, the journal writer, at first I was like, oh, my goodness, they're about to go there. And then it turns out, no, I, no, it's not me. I'm the assistant. I was like, oh, man, right, that right, means right. it's going to be someone we don't they're, know, but I'm really you. hoping. They're teasing yeah. you. We have okay. a theory from, well, uh, quite a theory, but sort of speculation from Nunspark on Tumblr, who has posted a picture of pointing out that every depiction of Stan, wax sculpture, puppet, photo, or otherwise, has been killed in some way. And they say, no, 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 the wiki is scaring me. A bunch of uh, <laughs> sub other people. Uh, wait, wait, can I be, can I be, uh, yeah, can be I be Christmas Christmas star? star? Okay. N no. No. No! That no. was Crispy Star Reblog's commentary. Very insightful. Uh, <laughs> Anne Rio Wings adds, uh, adding to that, they haven't just been killed. All of their deaths have been related to burning. Because we see... So now I want to, to show some images to Alexa and David. Here we have... From, oh, the uh, Deep End. The Deep End. When Wax Melted. Dan died a second time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> through melting here is puppet stan being set on fire and launched in the air and uh from from sock opera and from love god here is balloon stan <laughs> being set on fire and falling from the air okay so stan is the devil right is that what, <laughs> is that oh, what I, I like that interpretation yeah that picture was taken out of context there is a picture of <laughs> him as a little in, in Satan. season one finale <laughs> And he <gasps> claims it was taken out oh, of context. Ink isn't worth anything to me, Dipper. How many times have you quoted I'll that I'll do it exact once an episode. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I mean, the thing is, that's not That's not unexpected for, for our show. I still want more ukulele covers. 
Oh, there we will be. It. They're coming. There right. will. Right. Oh, there hey. will. There will be. <laughs> the wait. Okay, I read that one. You read this. One. Okay. The credits cryptogram, which is the Visionaire cipher. The key is cursed. It is found on every other window on the top floor of the North. They're really Island. working and us on this one. That, yeah. <laughs> and if they use it, if you use it on the credits cryptogram, you read. Next up on used to be about history channel. Did aliens write the Constitution? Crawdads in Tierras and Florida. The show. <laughs> uh, the uh, I'm sure that the end card combination cipher will be just as goofy and silly and fun. Let's see what we have here. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, because it's goofy and silly, why don't we let our goofy and silly? Yeah, doses, you know what? Let's do uh, that. Let's do us. that. Let's have just, Alexa uh, and David read. You, Dave, funny. Yeah, David, you read the first half. Alexa, you take over. Okay. All there. right. Stannis not what he seems. Stanitas Stannis not It's not no, it's it's a lot of it's I see I see the confusion. It's not one word. Stan is not what he seems. Stan is not what and he seems. Stan is not what he seems. You and you're not gonna believe this, folks. <laughs> so uh Alexa and David, it was wonderful talking with you, but you're not leaving us because you're on next week's yeah, episode. Yeah, we live here. So we, uh, which, we're going to live here the whole wait, week? It's so a sleepover? Do you guys want to take a guess as to what next week's episode might be titled? Stan is not what he seems. The next episode. Well, I do know that it is, it's Breaking Bad inspired is what Charlie yes. said before. Yes, I told so you that already. I'm going to assume that the episode is like spelling out like what happens in the finale or something like that if you put it together with the previous well, episode Alexa titles. Alexa got it the next episode is titled Yeah the next episode is titled Not what is it at the same time <laughs> 747 down over ABQ yep. the next episode is titled <laughs> Not what he seems mm. Join us for next week Not what he seems And if you want to find more episodes of this podcast go on down to our host network pipedreampodcast.com I love the fellow what runs yeah, that website. Yeah, yeah, they're great. They're great over Michael, there. Yeah, Michael's really you great. You can find other shows website. like Escape yeah. from Vault <laughs> Disney, How Did This Not Get Made, and <laughs> Come On for Hookahpots. Hey, I know have, that one. Have any of you have, you, have any of you guys been on those podcasts? Uh, or have you hosted uh, podcasts within those podcasts? Alexa, you've been on at least two of them. Yeah, yeah. I, I've uh, at Maybe least three? one. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think Alexa's ever been on Vault Disney. David has. Though. I've been on Vault yeah, Disney. Yeah, I have never been on Vault Disney. Yet. Uh, yet. Tony. Yeah. <laughs> well, that to be fair, Tony job. has yeah. yet to be yet to be on Come On for Hoogle Pods. Yet. I mean, there's David. <laughs> yet. Yet. Also on the website pipedreampodcast.com, you can find a link to our show's social medias, our Discord server, which is amazing. And like I said at the top, please check out our brand new store at crowdmade.com slash collections slash mystery shack look back for some sweet, sweet podcast merch. And our Patreon, patreon.com slash mystery shack. $3 will get you a shout out at the end of episodes. $5 will get you into viewing parties every Wednesday. Join us tonight for Northwest Match of Mystery. And $40 gets you voice or art commissions from Charlie or Ella Russ. And if you're rich, give us some money. Hear my and I might give you something, but probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever, do you ever just, I mean, I've definitely honestly had this thought before of like, you know, when, when everything starts to crumble, I, I hope that, uh, there's a part of me that hopes that some rich person likes this podcast enough to just keep me in their bunker and, and entertain them through the, uh. I don't want to be in a rich person's bunker. I like ever. that. No, because in the olden times, if you were an artist, they will a rich you. person would just adopt <laughs> you. You'd just be like their pet artist and you would come out occasionally to do jobs for them and you'd live on their property. I want to be like I want to be somebody's yes, that's Kato. How it used to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's also yeah. I my dream is to be the Cato Kaling of the, of someone. I guess I am, aren't I? You I are. No, I, a, that's what I said a... when I when I went to your new place. I said, yeah, you're the Cato. <laughs> I'm the Cato Kaling. Uh, thank you to Brian Brian for making the instrumental for our theme song and for voicing Stan in the Hall of Conspiracies intro, which is a song titled Lentil Dentist. It's a remix of our first episode by Sim and the Dimbulb, the two hyphen zero. There's a link in the description. Thank you to our editor of this episode, Elizabeth Nordenholt from Podcat Audio. Check out podcataudio.com for more information. If you have any of your thoughts going in to the mid-season finale when you first watched the show and you, you can recall them or, or archive them to your Tumblr or Reddit or what have you. 
please send us them. And again, if you leave us a five-star iTunes review in character as a Gravity Falls denizen of your choice, we will try to figure out what character it is on the podcast and read it in their Make voice. a game of it. So, Adam. I love it when Adam makes our eyeballs. Oh, I was saying blood. that Adam. It, there's, there's so much blood in my eyes, and it really Adam's helps. Adam's a really good uh, spit exorcist. <laughs> exorcist, if you will. <laughs> no, no, no! An expector. Expe- yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our our better. our ectoplasm is just gone thanks to you. So thanks. <laughs> Thank you for your expectorism. Yeah. And uh, you know what? I think I'm gonna I'm gonna play us out with a little, little ditty I, I'm reminded of at the times like these. Yay! There's something strange the in your neighborhood. Who you gonna call? <laughs> me back to the place I know with the mystery shack and the forest gnomes. I'm already packed, so come on, let's go. Don't get me started. My heart's in gravity falls. Hey, uh, this is Dipper 4. Uh, I'm here with Dipper 3, and we are here to shout out our Patreon supporters. Yeah. Finally, we get to do something again. We stole a bike and just been out here trying to avoid the rain. Uh, thank you, too. Daddy Driftwood? Oh, and, and it's me. Sorry, I thought... Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, alternating, right. got it. Um, and to uh, Daddy Buttons. Fun Boringness? Hugh Salinas. Juno Series? Friendly Local Geek. David Gansel? Liz Clark. Ryan Faber? Stephen Patrick Mulholland? Gwen Prime? Junior Bra. Or Jur... Jur Bra. Junior Bra. No, I, I think you got it. And uh, Oliver Pluto. Jamie Belts? Petey Piranha Plant? Mumble Teen D. Wumble Teen? Really, Miles? Ro Davis! What are we gonna do with all this money, Dipper 3? I don't know, Dipper 4. Uh. More, more umbrellas? Yeah, lots more umbrellas, tarps. Maybe like a hundred more umbrellas if you could? All the waterproof. Everything waterproof, uh, rains a lot more than, uh, than we expected. Can we laminate ourselves? Was that ever an option? I think that's a good option if we can find a place. Help two paper based guys in the woods just being guys! at patreon.com slash mystery shack.